Oh, my father, may you live forever, but you have destroyed me. If you had given me the swiftest galleys at sunrise when I first saw that the ship of the accursed Narnians was gone, I would perhaps have overtaken them. But you persuaded me to send first and see if they'd not merely moved round the point into better anchorage. And now the whole day's been wasted and they are gone, gone, gone! Compose yourself, O oh my son. For the departure of guests makes a wound that is easily healed in the heart of a judicious host. But I want her! I must have her! I shall die if I do not get her! False, proud, black-hearted daughter of a dog that she is! I must have the barbarian queen, or... or... A... Or what, my son? <sighs> I desire and propose, O oh my father, that you immediately call out your invincible armies and invade the thrice accursed land of Narnia and waste it with fire and sword, killing the High King and all of his blood except the Queen Susan, for I must have her as my wife, though she shall learn a sharp lesson first. Understand, O oh my son, that no words you can speak will move me to open war against Narnia. If you were not my father, O oh ever-living Tisrock, I should say that that was the word of a coward. And if you were not my son, O oh most inflammable Rabadash, your life would be short and your death slow when you had said it. But why, O oh my father, will you not punish Narnia for this offence to me? A thousand spears could conquer it in five weeks. Most undoubtedly. These little barbarian countries that call themselves free, which is as much as to say idle, disordered and unprofitable, are hateful to the gods and to all persons of discernment. Then why have we suffered such a land as Narnia to remain thus long unsubdued? Because it is a land of strong magic. It is inhabited by demons in the shape of beasts that talk like men, and monsters that are half man and half beast. It is commonly reported that the High King of Narnia is supported by a demon of hideous aspect and irresistible maleficence who appears in the shape of a lion. Therefore, the attacking of Narnia is a dark and doubtful enterprise, and I am determined not to put my hand out farther than I can draw it back. Hmm. Oh, my father... How if I show you a way by which you can stretch out your arm to take Narnia and yet draw it back unharmed if the attempt prove unfortunate? If you can show me that, O oh Rabadash, you will be the best of sons. Hear then, O oh Father, this very night and in this hour, I will take but two hundred horse and ride across the desert, and it shall seem to all men that you know nothing of my going. On the second morning, I shall be at the gates of King Loon's castle of Anvard in Arkenland. They are at peace with us and unprepared, and I shall take Anvard before they have bestirred themselves. Then I will ride through the pass above Anvard and down through Narnia to Carparavel. I shall find it most likely with open gates and ride in. I shall exercise prudence and courtesy and spill as little Narnian blood as I can. And what then remains but to sit there till the splendor Haline sails in with Queen Susan on board, catch my strayed bird as she sets foot ashore, swing her into the saddle, and then ride, ride, ride back to Anvard. But is it not probable, O oh my son, that at the taking of the woman, either King Edmund or you will lose his life? Oh, they will be a small company, and I will order ten of my men to disarm and bind him restraining my vehement desire for his blood, so that there shall be no deadly cause of war between you and the High King. And lastly, O oh my resourceful son, you have made clear how all this might give you the barbarian woman, but not how it helps me to the overthrowing of Narnia. Oh, my father, can it have escaped you that though I and my horsemen will come and go through Narnia like an arrow from a bow, Yet we shall have Anvard forever. And when you hold Anvard, you sit in the very gate of Narnia. And your garrison in Anvard can be increased by little and little till it is a great host. 
It is spoken with understanding and foresight. But how do I draw back my arm if all this miscarries? You shall say that I did it without your knowledge and against your will and without your blessing, being constrained by the violence of my love and the impetuosity of my youth. Go, my son, and do as you have said, but expect no help nor countenance from me. I will not avenge you if you are killed, and I will not deliver you if the barbarians cast you into prison. And if, either in success or failure, you shed a drop more than you need of Narnian noble blood, an open war arises from it, my favor shall never fall upon you again, and your next brother shall have your place. Now go, be swift, secret, and fortunate. May the strength of Tash the inexorable, the irresistible, be in your sword and lance. To hear is to obey. Of all the sneaky, conniving... Precisely. How did you get out? They eventually left the room and we were able to find the proper passageway, which took me to the water gate. I said farewell to my friend. Oh, Erevis, darling, won't you change your mind? No, especially now that I've seen the Tisrock and the Prince for what they are. Oh, Erevis, please don't speak against the Tisrock. May he live forever. It must be right if he's in favour of it. Goodbye, Lazaraline. I thought your dress is lovely, mm. and I think your house is lovely too. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll have a lovely life, though it wouldn't suit me. Mm. Close the door softly behind me. Goodbye, you poor misguided girl. And then you made your way to the tombs, right? <clears throat> if the two of you have finished your jawing, mm. you may climb up again for a ride. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 